The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and this week's a little bit of a special week, considering as the show went live yesterday, we heard uh, that that the, uh, oh, what was it, the uh, Missouri Grand Jury or, or the Ferguson Grand Jury or one of those grand juries decided not to indict Officer Darren Wilson in the death of Michael Brown. Um, so this week... Like I said last week, that it was not likely Cat was not going to be. It was likely that Cat was not going to be here because of Black Friday and the weekend and the fact that she works retail. But surprise, Cat's here. So I am. I mean, just barely. Like physically, I'm present in front of a microphone, but uh, mentally, uh, less so. Yeah. But uh, so this all this will be interesting. And what's really interesting is um, Holly is not able to be here because her family decided they were going to do their Thanksgiving thing today. And so you, she can't do a show in, in that kind of an environment. So she's not going to be here, which is the complete opposite of what I expected last week, <laughs> which I think is amazing. But considering this is going to be a, a different episode of Thespian Talk, going to be more, more in depth, more, more talky about one particular thing and more like an episode of constructive deconstruction i have got my other co-host from constructive deconstruction uh gonzo link how you doing man oh, i'm doing good been working fairly hard myself this week uh today is my day off so good sweet. timing sweet <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it's it's been a while since since you've been on a been on a podcast with me because it's like scheduling issues have been so bad for for a constructive deconstruction it's like ah yeah if it's the three hour time difference does tend to kind of screw things up yeah but we'll we're, we're working it out we're mashing it out hopefully <laughs> we'll have to mm. we'll have to see how it goes this week because uh because i know holly really wants us to cover a topic and i, I want to just like give it to her and just like boom there you go oh mm -hmm. so uh anyway as I as I mentioned, uh, well, actually, first a little bit of house cleaning, uh, house cleaning, housekeeping before we get into the topic. Um, if you're a patron of mine, uh, and you've you've odds are you've seen a message already, um, and even if you're not, I'm gonna be doing some changes to my Patreon page. You know, some different perks for the different levels. I'm gonna bring bringing back some of the uh, advertising perks for uh, for my patrons. So if you if you pledge a certain amount, you get some ad space either on the site. Um, and I'm even I'm even including um, audio bumpers, you know, to put in the podcast, which should should be a lot interesting. Uh, all those details I will I, w I will put out in a vlog or, or whatever later on. But that's so you know what's coming. Um, and I don't think there's any other. Ha oh yes, there is one other piece of housekeeping. Uh, within the next week or two, I'm going to be opening up auditions for the site again. Um, so you know, by the next show they should be open. And the link will be up. You just go to the link, click it, and like. And unlike last time, if you do audition, uh, hit me up on my Twitter at gomer 21 xx or on my Tumblr or whatever, and say, "Hey, I, I've sent in an audition." That way, if if well, WordPress eats it, I'll still know I got it, because <laughs> that happened last time. So, uh, oh, excuse me. So, so yeah. So. So, okay, Kat, you had the misfortune of working on Black Friday. How bad was it? Um, you know, honestly, it could have been worse. My job on Black Friday was not that bad because I very specifically didn't have to ring customers out or anything like that. It's just that I had to work Thanksgiving and then go home for four and a half hours, not be able to sleep, and then go back in the next day and then work like an eight-hour shift. Oh, um, ouch. But but honestly, I've had much worse Black Friday, so I shouldn't complain too much. Yeah. So mm -hmm. hey, <laughs> which, which which is why I'm really glad it worked out. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and of course, this is this is the show that that we we haven't talked about Ferguson a lot on here. I know, Kat, you've probably talked about it more on What the Fuck with uh, Josh and Charlie, but uh, this week is going to be a lot of Ferguson because well. Like I mentioned, as the show uh, went live last week, you know they came out that Darren Wilson was not going to be charged with the death of Michael Brown, who was an unarmed black kid, and just you know for whatever reason. And 
I'm going to tell you right now that um, there's, there's going to be a lot of words going around <laughs> coming from me, usually most likely going to him and people who, who support him. Um, yeah, you know, no. so there, there's going to be a lot there. Um, and there, there's been a lot of stuff going around. Holly, actually, she had found a link, I think it was from a St. Louis Public Radio, that shows all of the information, all of the evidence uh, that was released by uh, Rob McCulloch. McCulloch? Am I, am I pronouncing that right, Kat? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? I think it is McCulloch. McCulloch, I think, I think it's McCulloch. McCulloch? Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and there's like 24 volumes of grand jury stuff. There is forensic and reports of forensic evidence law enforcement interviews um you just look up uh, i think it's uh st louis public radio stlpublicradio.org just look for the Fer ferguson project um and 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 if you if you can't even remember all of that that'll be in the link below um uh, that's for all of the evidence we'll we'll be pulling from that here and there but uh, the one thing i'm actually going to be starting with is uh, i found this on a tumblr post by uh Losty's girl, um, who who would, who had a uh, reblogged a photo set with a lot a lot of the information that we'll be going over. Some of which will most likely be coming from all of those court documents that we that I just mentioned. Um, and the, and it starts with why Darren M Wilson is guilty of murder. So, yeah, and and I tend to agree with this. Sure, the grand jury was convinced that Darren Wilson wasn't guilty. But the, did the prosecutor really ask the right questions? How accurate was Darren Wilson's story after 108 days he had to prep? After the 108 days he had to prep. Yeah, that, that's another thing. Does it, you, I don't think it usually takes that long for that kind of a thing to happen, does it? Like you get, you get arrested or, or you get charged or possibly even charged with something. And within like what, within a week? They they decide whether or not to charge you or or indict you or whatever. Um, um, all I know is court cases take for fucking ever, right? For fucking ever. Yeah, because that's the legal system. I mean, and and I would most likely not be. I don't think any of us would be as about it if they took forever and everything was kosher and everything was right. But in this case, it took forever. It took 108 days. And they decided, yeah, we're we're not going to indict him because there was insufficient evidence or or what have you, or con I think one of the things was conflicting evidence, I believe, and it's like it's like you realize that to to figure out which evidence is true, which evidence is not, that's what a trial is for. Yeah, I don't know. It's just one of the things that I I think is really astounding about this whole issue is that after uh wilson shot brown he didn't even go to the trouble of filing a police report yeah that's number one right there um you, you're supposed to do that in fact i think it's illegal to not do that and so he's breaking the law more than one time over i mean he's got the big one obviously because as it stands right now based on the evidence that i've seen and based on the evidence that is out there and the fact that mr mcculloch here um, he seemed to be kind of covering for Darren Wilson, um, just, just a little bit. So that makes me, that makes me kind of think, yeah, well, D Wilson is definitely guilty. Not to mention the fact that there are several eyewitnesses around that can say, hey, this is how it went down. And I'm pretty sure a good chunk of those witnesses have cell phone cameras. That's, that's another thing. That that's why people are taking all these cell phone cameras whenever cops pull bullshit like this, so they can have the evidence. Yeah, boom, there you go. Mm -hmm. uh. Which, by the way, I, I think we talked about this on constructive deconstruction, but why the hell haven't cops, all cops around the country, been outfitted with, uh, like you know, collar cameras or just you know like cameras attached to their uniforms that are on every time they're whenever they're on duty. Yeah. Um, because nobody can afford that. Not everyone uh, can afford that. Yeah. I, I, because I there's the, the purchasing of cameras, the storage of cameras, the upkeep of cameras, the storage of data. Like, for example, Ferguson has cameras, but they hadn't installed them yet because they didn't have the money to even install them. Um, like, 
it's a money issue. You can barely pay some of these cops, much less outfit them all. Now, if you wanted to, for example, raise a tax on the people mm -hmm. to pay for this, I would be okay with that. But not every yeah. department is created equal, especially in, you know, the city and policing around the ghetto and having that job that nobody wants. Not every department can afford it. Yeah. Yeah. But see, I don't really buy that argument, though, because why do the cops have like all this riot gear and all, and like armored tanks and it's like a war zone out there it's like a fully funded war zone mm -hmm. so i don't buy the argument that there's no money yeah, it's just the money is being funneled into just different places and it's i i don't know i just think that they're personally my my belief on the issue and i i don't you know say this with any other um with any real evidence to back this up, but I just think that it, it is one of those things. It's like they they say the money isn't there, but that's only because they're not putting the money there. Yeah, it's it's like somebody going out there buying like seventy five hundred video games off of Steam or whatever, then come rent the next month. Oh, I don't have the money for rent. That's how I'm. That's how I'm seeing it. Uh, you know, they could have put the money more towards the cameras, but and 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 I think. Actually, in the case of Riot Gear, at least as far as Ferguson and stuff goes, uh, I want to say it was donated from the military. So, like, uh, yeah, uh, say the National Guard provided a lot of the mm -hmm. the weapons and the uh, vehicles. I don't know how much of it was provided for them um, by the state, but I know yeah. Ferguson cops don't have money. Yeah, Which... otherwise they wouldn't work in Ferguson. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh. Which, which again, like you, like you had said, Cat, you know, with the the tax on the people, raise the taxes a little bit. That'll help fund the thing. Or if you want to make, if or if you want, you know, to worry about spending from other places, cut it from somewhere else. That maybe isn't as important, and put it towards the police, you know, the the police force to get cameras. And you could do this. You could probably probably do this anywhere, really. You know, raise the taxes and cut some spending from other non-essential places. You know. You know, don't cut it from like education or something like that. But you know, a combination of both should get the cops cameras, or have have like if you're gonna have like other government agencies provide stuff or whatever, let them go worry about the cameras, let them get or or even the money. There are, there are ways to do it. It's just whether or not the government, be they local or national or what have you, is willing to take those steps to ensure it. Oh, uh, oh God, so. So back to Bob McCulloch. <laughs> uh, they regard him as having a strong prosecutorial bias in favor of law enforcement and an unusually strong prejudice against its accusers. Uh, by the way, this is a, a bullet point from the uh, bullet point list from the uh, Lost Eagles Girl uh, Tumblr photo set that I mentioned. Which again, all the links that we have, whether we use them in the show or not, we are going to put them in the uh, description so you guys can look for yourself. And if one or any of us get it gets something wrong or we read something wrong and we don't catch it then you can come back and say hey asshole look <laughs> you misread this <laughs> so uh, mcculloch's father brother nephew and cousin all served served with the st louis police department his mother was a clerk there and on july 2nd 1964 when mcculloch was 12 his father a 37 year old canine officer paul mcculloch was shot in the head and killed by a fleeing kidnapper named eddie glenn in the former pruitt pruitt igo housing projects. He never got over his father's slaying, which, okay, that's understandable, a little bit of background. In 91, he charged Axel Rose with misdemeanor assault and property damage for allegedly hitting a security guard, hurting three con concert goers, and damaging an a dressing room at Riverport Amphitheater after riotous Guns N' Roses concert. Uh, so, basically, a typical Guns N' Roses fair? I don't know. Uh, and uh, it ended with injuries to 40 fans and 25 police officers. McCulloch made headlines by pursuing Rose across the country to serve an arrest warrant. Wherever he goes, we'll be waiting for him, McCulloch told the media. If he wants to cancel his whole schedule, fine. If he leaves the country, we'll notify Customs to get him when he comes back. That's... I, I can understand the drive on that one. Sure. You know. In uh, 1997, an employee of the St. Louis County Economic Council named Rustin... Singorino? Yeah, he contacted the FBI to report what he said was improper behavior by a member of the county executive's cabinet. He also sent reporters an anonymous fax from Kinko's in Cravemauer, Missouri, claiming that the fax contained a threat. McCulloch gave a grand jury subpoena 
to the county police, who then used it to obtain security footage from Kinko showing that Signoro had sent the message. Okay, he never told the grand jury what he was doing, and later admitted that Signoro had never issued a threat or committed a crime. And no matter, Sing Singorino was forced to resign anyway. According to the Post-Dispatch, McCulloch denied that he had abused the grand jury process to identify a whistleblower who was acting lawfully. There, oh, there's one thing there. Hmm. Mm. In 2001, McCulloch convened another grand jury after a pair of undercover drug officers shot and killed two men, a suspect and his passenger, outside a jack-in-the-box in Berkeley, Missouri. The officers told the jurors that they had fired only after the suspect tried to run them over with his car and in his public statements about the secret proceedings, McCulloch himself repeatedly insisted that every witness had corroborated the officer's version of events. Uh, let's see. We'll go back over this one again, because I'm smelling bullshit. Uh, let's see. Uh, shot and killed two men, a suspect and his passenger. Um, told jurors they had fired only after the suspect tried to run them over. A subsequent report by the Post-Dispatch revealed that McCulloch had lied. See? Knew it. Uh... Consider, considering most recent events with this guy, I, I'm finding it a little easier, or maybe I'm just paranoid. I don't know. Uh, he had lied. Only three of the 13 detectives who testified said the suspect's car had moved forward. Uh, two of them were shooter, the shooters themselves. The third was a detective who McCulloch later had he considered charging with perjury because his account was so at odds with the facts. According to the grand jury tapes, four other detectives testified that they never saw the suspect's car travel toward the officers. A collision expert working for the Justice Department also determined that the suspect's car had remained in reverse throughout the incident. But McCulloch had never brought any of this evidence before the grand jury, and, as a result, the jurors determined that the officers were right to fear for their safety. The case didn't go to trial. Now, this this is the background of the guy who who is who's the prosecutor for Darren Wilson. He, he's the one responsible for indicting him and bringing him to justice because I believe – I may have said it on previous shows. I know I've talked to my girlfriend about this several times. Even if you strip, strip away everything, you know, Darren Wilson, he at the very least, very least, used excessive force. Even if, even if, even, you know, even if it was true and Michael Brown attacked him. Or, or was trying to beat the shit out of him or whatever, which evidence is showing that didn't happen. You know, pulling a gun immediately because of whatever reason, that's a little bit of excessive force. Wouldn't, would you, would either of you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and so is firing, like, what was it, 11 shots into him? Yeah, exactly. I mean, come on. It, if, if, you could have just, I, I'm not saying, like, that, he was right in shooting him even, but you could have just winged the dude and then like taken him in. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying that he should have done that. I'm not, I mean, I honestly don't even know at this point, you know, but all I know is that the dude did not get deserve to get sh fucking gunned down. No, he didn't. No, ma no matter what the circumstances, I don't care if he was attacking the cop, you're a police officer. Like, you can handle it. You can do something about it. You can... <sighs> yeah. I, I just hate the, the the fact that that is just the reaction that so many cops have gone to, is pull out their gun and just unload six grams of lead into the into the fuckers. Yeah. I mean, and, and there's also reports going around out there that, you know, he, you know, Wilson never carried around a, a taser because he was uncomfortable or was uncomfortable. And it's like, so you're going to carry around... The, the weapon that can easily – more easily end a life because you're uncomfortable carrying around a taser, something that is generally less lethal. Okay. Yeah, unless you have like a serious heart condition or something, a taser, you know, will will throw you for a loop, but it's not going to kill you. Yeah. Also, also if, you're set, if you douse yourself in gasoline. I, I, I've heard that people have like caught on fire and died after being tased, after being doused in gasoline. Well, uh, so that's you, know, just, you know, that's yeah. yeah. But there, are, there are basically under normal circum. Those are abnormal circumstances, anyway. So, so, uh, so in response to all of this, uh, civil rights attorney and MSNBC legal analyst uh, Lisa Bloom uh, points out Darren Wilson's cross examination was a joke. And before I do that, Cat, I, I think we kind of steamrolled over you on on this particular point. Uh, do you have any thoughts on it? Ah. Uh. I honestly think that no one in this conversation 
has enough facts. And the fact that no one can agree on what happened is exactly why there was no indictment, or at least part, at least a smidgen of why there was no indictment, because we're sitting here talking, going, at least I think that's what happened, or that's what I've heard, but none of us have evidence of anything. Right. Like, mm -hmm. we're talking about, you know, him unloading a clip into a kid who was attacking him, and we hear that he doesn't carry his taser with him, but we don't know anything. This is the exact same situation we were in in August. We don't fucking know what happened. Right. And we're sitting here trying to hang a man or not hang a man based on no evidence at all whatsoever. We're hearing from this source that this happened and that source that that happened and nobody's gotten a straight story because the media can't make up its fucking mind about what happened or didn't happen. The media is sorry. I have a real issue with how the media has handled this entire situation and maybe it's because I live in St. Louis or something, but I'm really fucking sick of getting the runaround by the media who are more interested in giving us up to date immediate information rather than fucking facts. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. It, it and does I say don't know that I've heard a straight story out of even one fucking network. And I don't really know how to bring my thoughts and opinions forward when I don't fucking know what happened any better than anyone else. I'm just not going to pretend like I know what happened when I don't. Right. And that's fair. Yeah. It, when, it, it says something that a lot of the stuff that I do know and that I've heard or even spec have heard be speculated. It came a lot through social media, not from like the big networks. A lot of it was social media. Social media is the one that, that brought up like – I think there was like pictures of uh, Mike Brown's body just sitting there for four hours after he was killed. And you know, you got the people with the cameras. You've got people on the ground when, when the initial protests were going on with the camera, cell phone cameras, with the, the, the video cameras and everything. You know, updating it to Vine and into YouTube and everywhere else that shows what's going on there. Whereas the government's response is, you know, a media blackout, so to speak. You know, with only certain sources getting in, and even in, even those sources that do get in, they don't get the whole story because, well, they're the ones that were vetted and they were let in. So the the government has time to kind of put on a good face if you will instead of giving them the raw footage that we're getting from social media so the the only media that i've been paying attention to because honestly i'm sick of social media right. i'm sick of tumblr people and people on facebook who suddenly have fucking law degrees telling me what i should think about something that's happening in my city right I'm tired of people's opinions becoming facts. I've been listening to pretty much just my local news. And it's because, again, I live in St. Louis. Uh -huh. um, there's not as much bias from the media here as you might think. Okay. Um, so I'm listening to my local news, watching my local news. And then um, the uh, Ferguson Scanners is a pretty good source for when the, the riots and stuff were going down. Uh -huh. um, but pretty much otherwise, I'm just fucking sick of it. I am so, so, so incredibly sick of people's opinions getting thrown in, in my face as facts because that's, that's all we have. We don't have as many facts as we think we have because everybody else's facts sort of obliterates the other people's facts. And how are we supposed to know what to believe or what kind of conclusion to draw when somebody says that Darren Wilson was pinned down in a car and couldn't reach his club. And then somebody else says, Oh, well, he didn't even carry a club. He just shot the kid. Like, what are we supposed to think? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, there's, there's, there's so much conflicting information that came out of this whole, whole mess that I, I honestly don't think I've had any mostly silent. Cause I, I just, I don't, I mean, I've, admittedly, I've been reblogging a lot of stuff on Tumblr, especially after the indictment, mm -hmm. or non-indictment, rather, um, but as far as, like, I just, I don't know what the hell, you know, I'm supposed to believe, even, I mean, I, like I said, the only thing I do believe is that it, you know, that nobody deserves to get just gunned down in the middle of the street, but, uh, I mean, well, I don't know. I, yeah. It, this, this, yeah, yeah. This is this is one of those shows, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> uh, but 
but you know, people talking about it and getting stuff out there, you know, whether it's just you know, like the three of us, you know, we we have the the articles here, and again, we're gonna link them below, so you guys can look, and most importantly, look and see for yourself and decide from there. Um, some of the attitudes that I have seen around this whole situation, even after the shooting, after the non-indictment, were people trying to insinuate that, yeah, Mike Brown deserved to be shot and killed. You know, and there was even a thing about about him being accused, I, I, guess, I guess, like after he had died, that he had robbed a convenience store not long before. And there's even questions about whether or not Darren Wilson knew about it at the time and and everything there. But it does go back to what we were I, – I think what you were going off about earlier, Gonzo, was uh, he didn't deserve to die. You know, Whether or not he, he robbed the store, whether or not he was jaywalking or what have you, he did not deserve to die. But Darren yeah, Wilson no, that's apparently – That's why we have the legal system. That's why we have due process. That's why everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. So, um, see, here's where I come into conflict with, um, and, and this is just a little bit devil's advocate, a little bit supporting cops, because I do believe that cops are mostly good, but um, cops have the right to protect themselves with lethal force. And where we sort of blur the line is how much danger did Darren Wilson feel that he was in? Yeah. Um, so this is where, again we don't have enough evidence and we have too many conflicting statements to know how much danger he really thought he was in. Did he use excessive force? Absolutely. Was his life in danger? How should we fucking know? We just don't. We don't know what was going to happen if he hadn't shot the kid. Right. Um, but he was so, so on one hand I hear, oh, he was pinned down in a car with this big guy attacking him. And you know, he reached for his gun and there it was. And every fucking day cops are murdered by guys their size, smaller, faster, doesn't matter. Cops get blown away every fucking day. There have been, I don't know, like 750 something uh, police deaths this year alone. And those cops have wives and families they want to return to. And so if they are going to you like save themselves, that's what they're going to do. They have that right as someone who puts their lives on the line every single day. Yeah. Now, whether or not he was using excessive force, absolutely. Yeah, again, yeah. But I can't say that I wouldn't have done the exact same thing in that situation. You know, I'm not a cop. I can't pretend like I understand that experience right. of getting attacked by somebody or, um, you know, the adrenaline rush and pulling the trigger a few too many times to make sure the guy goes down, because that's something else that happens every single day. People get the adrenaline rush and then um, they're getting shot at. You know, these are even like people who are criminals, for example, being shot at by cops can resist the bullets long enough to kill a cop. It happens all the time. Yeah. But that's not what the media is focused on right now. Right. And uh, that's not a story that we're hearing to sort of balance things out. Um, anyway, I'm sort of ranting here. But the point is, I I really feel like, yeah, 11 bullets is quite a lot. But if I were pinned down in a car by a guy who I thought was going to kill me, fuck yeah, I'd probably pull that trigger too. Yeah. Which, right. Which yeah, is... none of us know what we actually would do in that situation because none of us are cops. You know, none of us... Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I've never been in a situation where I had to make, you know, a split second life or death decision. And I'm not even saying that that's what happened with Darren Wilson, but who knows at this point, seriously, like, it's just, yeah, there's just not enough evidence because all of it is conflicting. All of it's different. The media has done everything it can to both ways distort, uh, the, you know, the perception of both Darren Wilson and Michael Brown. So... Uh, yeah, and Fuck. yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> right. <Fuck>. Uh. <laughs> what are we supposed to think? We're what just, are we supposed it, to think? It, it's like mommy and daddy are fighting, and we're the kids going, but but I love you both, but I don't know what yeah. to do. <laughs> like, right. I, I want to support our, 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 you know, our men in uniform because they do provide a legitimate service a good amount of the time, but there are a lot of them that don't seem to be that good people but how do we know and 
What do we do? Because we can't just have no police force. That would be stupid. Yeah, right. that would. You would have to have some kind of a police force. Even if we didn't have the police force as we have it now, there would be people out there. We would have, like, city militias running around keeping law and order. And yeah, we'd have be... gangs of, like, armored whatever is just wandering the streets being like, well, we're keeping it safe now. Mm -hmm. So that would be the de facto police force. So yeah, sorry, everybody who's saying like, oh, all the police force is racist and they're all horrible people. It's like, yeah, but they're what we've got. And, yeah. And I, I kind of want to bring up something of the, all we hear right now is dirty cop stories and bad cop stories. And maybe every two weeks or so we're getting a good cop story. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, if Darren Wilson had been indicted, which he was never going to be indicted, um, I, I didn't believe it for a second that he would ever be indicted, but um, if he had been, my fear is that we would start to have cops who are more like doctors, where we have surgeons and doctors who won't treat patients because they're afraid of getting sued. Mm -hmm. And the very, very last thing that we need is cops who don't want to act because they're afraid they're going to be sued. Yeah, which, ugh, that that is also another iffy area as well. It's like, uh, uh, because the bad ones, yeah, the bad ones, the ones that, that fuck up royally or, or, or just outright assholes that need to be you know disciplined, for lack of a better term, they need to be dealt with, sure. But... But you know, there's also, like you said, if, if too much of it happens all at once or if it's too big, then you're going to have some cops that, that are going to worry about being sued. And we, that, where is the middle ground on that one, I wonder? Mm -hmm. um, one of the other problems that the police department has, and this is sort of not the story you get from outside, but um, a lot of the good cops, the good cops don't you know, work in the rough areas. The good cops who are really, really excellent at their jobs, who get all of these fantastic promotions, they get promoted to safer neighborhoods. Um, yeah. They they go work Creve Coeur and, and the Burbs, and they don't work Ferguson and North County. They don't work East St. Louis. They don't work where the the racism is at its worst, where the crime is at its heaviest, because they're they're good cops and... And I hate to say this, but they're good cops and they probably deserve a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and and that really, really hurts the people of those neighborhoods. It's it's sort of like the bad schools. And and I really feel like there's very few problems that can't be solved in this country with better education. Right. Um, and the areas that have the highest crime have the worst education. Yeah. That 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 is that is something that we that 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 can be done and i was just thinking you know with with the good cops you know going to the better places to you know co comparatively speaking cushier jobs or what have you was i the only one thinking of attack on titan because because think about it you go it's, through it's the, a little bit like that yeah you know you go through the core and the top students they go they can go into the most inner wall and and they they protect the king away from all the man-eating titans so you know and and they're the yeah. worst equipped because they're trained to fight big, you know, giant man-eating things, and they're having to fight normal people. But but they didn't, except for like one or two, they never really learn human hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah, and all the people who fail, you get sent out beyond the wall. Yeah, where you... You get to try and make us a new home outside the wall, which is never going to happen. Yeah. Right. So it takes, it kind of like in AOT, it takes a really certain breed of cop to want to be in that neighborhood. If you do have a good cop in that neighborhood, then they are exceptionally dedicated to justice or, you know, uh, beating titans and finding, you know, a way to not be all eaten. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, the good, the good cops are going to be outnumbered by the bad cops in a place like that. Yeah. Uh and oh lordy so so one of the things that also has been going around um which is also there are screen caps of it in the losties girl uh, tumblr that's going to be linked below but also uh, there's a tumblr post from uh, riley chester who has this directly and it's a lot easier to read too uh but there's a series of tweets from lisa bloom who uh who did they say she was i know it's in the other one um 
yeah, she's the civil rights attorney, MSNBC legal analyst. Um, yeah, that's 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 how how long ago I had actually read that information because I just now remember it. <laughs> um, but she did put out a series of tweets. Uh, I'll read some of them at least. Um, she's waiting for the part where he ex- where he uh, he being um, uh, Bob McCulloch, by the way. Uh, waiting for the part where he explains how Darren Wilson's life was threatened by a twice-shot, unarmed Mike Brown. Um, because that, I believe, you know, if you're going to be coming in and you're going to be defending or, or prosecuting somebody, you have to be able to explain some things, you know. You know, especially if, like, you're in Darren Wilson's, like, in Darren Wilson's case, you'd think you'd be explaining to some some lawyer, you know, whether whether it's your lawyer or whether it's the judge or whatever, you should be able to explain how your life was in danger. Uh, you know, and in the case of uh, McCulloch here, apparently he never did that. Um, you know, if conflicting witness testimony was a reason not to charge, America would no longer be the land of mass incarceration. <laughs> yeah, like I said earlier, you know, you have the conflicting evidence. You know, you you have evidence, and a trial is there to see which evidence is you know which evidence is supposed to be the right one which one is the truth you know that's why you have trials so you can find out okay did he really do this did he really not do this was he justified in doing this you know his motives and everything else like that that's why we have trials and i think that's one of the reasons why some people are pissed and you know a lot of people rather are pissed that this is that he didn't get indicted it's it's because you know there there is evidence available in fact, like I said, that first link I mentioned, there's all the stuff includes reports and forensic evidence from from the scene and from I think, I think there's like two or three different autopsies done on Mike Brown himself, and there's evidence there that you know, you, you could enter into a trial or whatever, and it, the trial's not even going to happen, or at least not there. I think they're trying to take it up to a higher court, which I think they're able to do that to see if a higher court would indict and actually get a trial. And you know, get the truth to come out instead of Bob McCulloch, who basically, as as the uh, stuff has shown, what we have read has shown, um, is 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 less likely to do it because he's buddy buddies with the cop, which conflict of interest right there in and of itself. Because you know, how do you know he's going to be impartial? And I would think that as an attorney, or or even a prosecuting attorney, if you have a cop from your precinct coming in you need to be impartial am i am i off on this am, am i right on this am i warm even <laughs> um. i i i think there was never going to be such a thing as impartial in this case or at least there's no way that people would be willing to accept any particular party as being impartial this is such a heated heated uh topic and pretty much People in general have sort of drawn a line in the sand and have said, look, you're either on one side or you're on the other. Yeah. Yeah. And and also, uh, again, more from uh, Lisa Bloom's Twitter. After the shooting, Darren Wilson said he didn't need to go to the hospital, speaks to his attorney, then agrees to go. Page 248. I think that's from one of the legal documents. Uh, hospital finds no injuries to Darren Wilson other than slight redness to on his face, though he says Mike Brown punched him full force twice. Um, I, I, I've not been punched full force twice, but I would think there would be a little bit of extra, uh, extra injury besides just redness if somebody was punched twice in the face. I don't care who you are. I Did mean, they say punched in the face? Um, uh, I'm curious. I'm curious. Well, because this this Twitter didn't specify that he said he was punched in the face, and I believe he said that that's where he was punched. But yeah, one of her tweets says Darren Wilson's police interview: Mike Brown struck me in my face ten times. Wilson, the grand jury, struck me in my face two times. Hmm, fun. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's that there. <laughs> um. Uh, let's see. Takes a grand juror, not a prosecutor, to ask Wilson if he thought Brown had a gun. You know, and. Wilson said he wasn't thinking about that at the time. No follow-up. Uh, prosecutor is questioning of Wilson so friendly that at the end he points out no one asked him how Brown was a threat if he was running away. Which I, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but that seems like a, a legitimate question, you know. 
if he was running away, how was he a legitimate threat? Because I think I think the reports do show that uh, Brown was killed and his body ended up like a uh, hundred something. I want to say hundred forty something feet away from the car. You know, and he had his hands up. And even the forensic evidence, uh, yeah, forensic evidence. The uh, autopsy is showing. Um, b- 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 bring that back up. Uh, palm of right hand, tangential, close discharge. According to this, that seems to be the only one uh, that was close. Uh, there was back right forearm through ulna bone exits in front, which means that particular forearm was shot, well, at least from behind somehow. He could have had it you know, up guarding his face or whatever. Uh, right upper arm near to elmo, elbow tangential through skin and soft tissues, direction indeterminate. Uh, front of upper right arm near to chest exits back of arm. Uh, top of head uh, proceeds downward and to the right through brain, bullet recovered from top soft tissues, right side of face. Um, there's forehead, uh, proceeds downward to the right, through the eye and facial bones, exits lower right jaw. Um, it re-enters the upper right, right upper chest through the clavicle and is recovered from near the third posterior rib, which me, which tells me again, I, I'm, I'm not a professional at this, but, but based on that right there, he had his head down at one point, I guess, when he was shot. And, and it could have been just, you know, he, he's falling gun conscious or whatever. Or he could have just already been dead and, and you know, shots were still flying. Um, right side of chest proceeds downward and to the right to soft tissues fractures eighth rib from where it was recovered. Um, so, and that's, and that's all seven bullet tracks that this report shows, by the way. So, uh, so uh, where, where was I going with that? <laughs> um, Not but, sure. Not but, sure. We lost it. Yeah, we, lost we did. It. We lost a little bit there. But the mm. point is, point is, uh, if if he was a threat while well, running away, uh, why why did you need to shoot that many times in those specific areas? I mean, I'm sure he probably wasn't necessarily aiming for those areas. I mean, you start shooting wildly. I think aim is the last thing you think of. So also moving targets. I've never shot anybody, but I'm assuming they're hard to hit. Yeah, just a little bit. Even even guy as big as Brown, because I understand he was a pretty big guy. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, just person. Uh, okay, this is this is actually kind of a a bad comparison, but I don't know why I was just think why this made me think of this. But okay, do you remember the scene in the end of Fargo when uh, Francis McDormand finally catches up with uh, you know Peter Stormare's character, and then you know he, she sees him doing something bad, really bad, feeding a dude into a wood chipper. And her response is to point at the badge on her on her forehead and be like, police. He, you know, hucks a log at her, runs away, and then she shoots him in the leg. Yeah. And then takes him in. Yeah. That's how you do it. That's, that's how you a, do it. I'm, I'm a, sorry. Like, it it's a movie, back. though. Yeah. I know it's like... a movie, and it's not supposed to accurately reflect reality, but I still couldn't help thinking that's how it's done. Doesn't matter. You know, just... <sighs> I, I don't know. I'm I'm sorry. I just this that's like the one point that I just keep coming back to is yeah. you could is if 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 he really feared his life was in danger. I don't know. I mean, you, you, yeah, I guess cops are permitted to use lethal force, but just because you can do something doesn't mean you necessarily should do it. And that... there, I can agree. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of like you know. You know, a more lawful uh, James Bond 007. License to kill doesn't mean you have to use it. <laughs> Just like, or or even better, or, or, or even a more relatable one. We, I'm, I'm pretty sure all three of us have driver's licenses. We have the license to drive. Doesn't mean we have to. So, you know, that might be a little bit more relatable to everybody else. Because, <laughs> yeah. So uh, another another tweet she does put out, uh, Sarge, the sergeant says Wilson told him he did not know of the stealing incident, which was the convenience store thing, which um, the footage, I believe, showed somebody else and somebody somebody mistook that guy for Michael Brown. And when it, and the store owner was like, no, it wasn't him. In fact, we were not even worried about that too much. You know, or I don't know if they were worried about the theft, but they, they, they pretty much said, yeah, it, it's not Michael Brown. No. Even though people are are still and 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 I, I want to say it's some at least some of the media and and some of the on the on the Wilson side of supporters were saying yeah he robbed a goddamn convenience store what do you expect was going to happen and uh, meanwhile this poor owner is sitting here like no 
No, are you listening to me? Hi. I'm saying no, no, he didn't. I recognize the guy. That's not him. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the sergeant says Wilson told him he did not know the stealing incident, but Wilson said he did know about it, and nobody pointed out the inconsistency, which that's a pretty big inconsistency. I mean, you know, at least point it out, say, okay, why did you tell him this, and you're saying this now? I mean, were you lying then? Are you trying to lie now? I mean, yeah. Well, that's and that. I think that's probably the most important point to take away from these tweets is that basically what she's doing is she's going over all of the information that uh, Darren Wilson, you know, talked about in his initial, you know, reports and interviews, and then the information that was presented at the grand jury and his testimony there, how all of it's pretty much inconsistent with, the, you know, with his initial testimony, yet none of it was uh, questioned during cross-examination. Yeah. It's basically he got softballed, pretty much. Yeah, and, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, when when you're dealing with the fact that somebody is now dead, mm-hmm. and that there's a ton of conflicting evidence as far as how this person actually died, then you don't deserve a softball, uh, your you know, prosecutor. You, you deserve somebody who's going to actually take you to task on those questions and you know, try and glean some kind of truth out of this, or something, so, so, some kind of realization out of the situation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that, that, again, that's why we have trials! This the, with, with the conflicting evidence and everything that, that happened, you know, with the trial, before the trial, the forensic evidence, the autopsy reports, this should have went to trial. This should have. In, in a normal circumstance, this probably would have, because from what I understand, the not these this decision not to indict somebody is typically very rare. So, so this is a, a newsworthy thing in and of itself, because holy shit, somebody is not getting indicted, even though there's this evidence that uh, you know a good chunk of it points to him actually doing it, but we don't know without a trial and somebody actually digging through and finding out what the hell is going on. Now I see. I thought the family wanted the grand jury. Uh, like they they wanted the speediest possible result, and that's uh, unfortunately what they got. Yeah, which uh, one hundred day one hundred eight days since since their son was 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 murdered. Which yeah, unless I know otherwise, it's probably how I'm going to end up labeling it until I learn otherwise, because. The, the, with the way things are looking and the way that the the indictment hearing went and everything, it, it is looking like a big cover up on on the part of you know the, the the government, the law for Darren Wilson, you know that sort of thing. So you, you keep bringing up the 108 days, like like yeah. Oh my God, this is such a long period of time, dude. I got my credit card stolen in like March. Mm-hmm. And like it, he the guy who stole it went in front of the court in October. Ah, uh, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> These things take for fucking ever. Yeah, I see. I don't deal with legal systems that much. I, I guess I guess my uh, my uh, perspective on what would be speedy is a little a little skewed. Uh, I will admit that. Um, I uh, I have um, uh, a relative who is a. Uh, a lawyer for um uh what what do you call it when 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 they're willing to kill you um <laughs> uh, attempted murder no 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 when uh, when you've already been tried and you go to prison for um threatening uh... no no no, no. Oh, f- fuck i don't know why my brain isn't working <laughs> ah! um uh, i blame black friday yeah like when when you steal something in texas and they hit you in the head with a brick uh, <laughs> <laughs> um um <laughs> Uh, sorry, I don't know why my brain can't think of this very simple two words. Um, yeah. Death sentence. He's a death sentence lawyer. Yeah. Um, and this shit like takes like years and years and years. Yeah, when it comes to death sentences, definitely very understandable because you want to be absolutely sure that if that if the government is going to kill somebody. Then they made it better. Make sure they've got the right person. They've got the 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 you know just complete justification. They're not putting somebody innocent to death, that that doesn't deserve to die. That sort of thing, mm. yeah, and all that. And 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 like I said, uh, you know, my I, I have not dealt much with the legal system personally, so so my sense of 
of whether or not something is speedy or not is it is a little skewed at this point. And so. and that right there is my problem with the media. Mm -hmm. Because I really feel like everybody wanted a solution right away. They wanted justice and this whole no justice, no peace thing. Like it was pretty much like unless Darren Wilson was arrested and fucking hanged within a day of Mike Brown being shot, this was never going to come to a good resolution because no justice, no peace. Right. And, and there's so much, so much that takes time. Like out in August, when all of this shit went down, um, you know, they were like, we want results right now. And we're like, actually an autopsy actually takes longer than it does on CSI. Sorry. These things do take legitimate amounts of time. It can't be solved in 60 minutes with, you know, eight breaks for commercials. Yeah. Um, but the media was like spurring all of this shit on because nobody who was part of this, you know, had any real understanding of how long this should take. And um, like the justice system is fucking slow. It shouldn't be. It honestly shouldn't be, but it is. Right. Um, and it took for freaking ever. And meanwhile, this entire time there's been a shit ton of unrest in Ferguson and we of St. Louis have not spent one hour of our media, not bringing Ferguson up since August, mm -hmm. every single case, every shooting, every whatever, which is by the way, like every day in North County, everything is getting related to Ferguson and they can't, they have to mention Ferguson for everything. And if, if you think that keeps Ferguson fresh in your mind, it really doesn't. It yeah. makes the people of St. Louis really, really fucking sick of hearing about Ferguson. Yeah, which honestly, I can't blame. I can't blame you all for that one because you're right there. It's like, yeah, we know. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and yeah. we we have a shit ton of racism here in St. Louis. <laughs> St. Louis likes to think of itself as this little enlightened spot out in the Midwest, but there's way too much of the Missouri in St. Louis. Um, and there's a lot of racism, way more than than other people of St. Louis think there is. Um, and I know this because I read the comments on those local St. Louis pages um, on Facebook and such where they post news about Ferguson and there's just so much, so much vile fucking racism coming out of it. Um, and so you have this city full of dissatisfied parties on every side mm -hmm. and, uh, and you expect some sort of outcome that's going to please anybody and there's not. Yeah. It also doesn't help that the KKK got involved. Well, so did oh. the Black Panthers, but... Yeah. Uh... yeah, although from what I'm understanding, what I'm learning now is, is the Black Panthers are not so much like the KKK. I mean, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're a, a group, they're, they're, they're a powerful group and everything, but you don't see that I – at least the, the uh, examples I have seen, especially lately of them, they're more fighting for, you know, just for people to stop treating – Treating black people like second-class citizens, which still goes on in this country, unfortunately. You must have missed all the articles I read where two members of the Black Panther group were arrested by the FBI because they were going – they were buying bombs to bomb the arch. Ah, I must have missed that one then. <laughs> Oh. Um, there, there are extremists everywhere. That that might be some sort of cover-up too, but that was the FBI, and yeah. and I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, see there, <laughs> there, again, there, you there, know, there, there, there were spaces the actions of a few don't always represent the actions of the whole. This is true. Like, right. I mean, you know, that's why we shouldn't paint all cops with the same brush because not all cops are Darren Wilson. Yeah. And. You know, not all Black Panthers are violent radicals who were attempting to blow up, you know, you know, national monuments. And uh, I, I don't really think we can extend the same courtesy to the KKK, though. Yeah. I, so far, I haven't been able to, no. Because, like, every time no. the KKK has popped up, they're doing something horrible. Now, I have, now, well, now in I... this case, yes. In this case, there there, there have been other cases where the, the KKK has told the Westboro Baptist Church to fuck off. Yeah. And, and I, I think if the KKK is telling you that you're too extreme, then holy shit. Yeah. yeah. 
just oh damn <laughs> oh yeah but uh yeah they're they're very compared compared to the black panthers and to the police department the kkk is probably more evil if you want to go on a scale than the other two not to saying that the, that there aren't evil members of the other two groups and not saying that there's no good members of the kkk is just the face that we see of them is is more one or the other wherever they happen to fall on the scale you know hashtag not all cops hashtag not all blank Panther, black panthers etc <laughs> hashtag not all of anybody yeah not yeah and and i think that's such a huge problem is that that's the way Again, it's not even just the media, but the media has really spurned it that way where, again, where we've drawn a line in the sand and we say you can only be on one side or the other. And there's a lot of us, you know, waffling in the middle going, I, I, I don't want to draw the line. I don't want to pick a side. I just want people to stop being mean to each other. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. I wish people treated each other with more compassion and then there wasn't so much fucking fear in this world. Yeah. I mean, and even fear of just being wrong and being proven wrong. Yeah, I, hell, even on this show, this very episode, there, are pro there have been things where, you know, I've been proven wrong or, or I've been shown to be wrong or I have been shown, hey, dumbass, you don't have all your information. You know, here's more information or what have you. And I welcome that. I really do. Because once it gets – once I have the new information and it gets you know, kind of jammed into my thick head, then it will be there, and if I was wrong before, then I won't be wrong anymore. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. And if honestly you just persist in believing something because it's what you have felt and it's what makes you feel good or something, and then somebody comes along and says, hey, that's actually like pretty, you know, pretty wrong, or at least you know, I can prove it wrong – yet you persist in that belief, then you're just being willfully ignorant. Yeah. And then there's just nothing that can, you know, that can come from that. And there's a lot of that in, in this case in particular. Yes. Oh. And on both sides. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. it, it's really been quite nauseating to watch it, just to watch racism and the, the hatred, just lots and lots of hatred on both sides, racism yeah. on both sides. Um, and what we're seeing in St. Louis is like, okay, it's, it's nice that you guys are talking about this and, and it's even good that I'm not saying it's good that this happened, but I, I'm glad that people are bringing up the very real discussions that are happening where, yeah, guess what? Racism right. is still a huge issue in this country and there are dirty cops and things need to change. And it's good that these things are coming into light, but they're coming into light in extremes. And right. meanwhile, we've had almost an entire city burned down. Um, yeah. Like one of my friends lost their business. Like, okay, oh, great. Yeah. Great. Holy crap. Well, I, I think also something that we need to just keep in perspective is that none of us are black. So we have no idea at what it's actually like for, you know, to be confronted by the cops or to have, you know, to be aggressively questioned by the cops. Mm -hmm. And so and we don't live with that fear of what are these people going to do to us? Or is this cop one of the good guys or is he, a, a, you know, a, a, you know, a xenophobe with a, with an itchy trigger figure? Exactly. And, 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 and I will admit, I, I do see myself as a bit of an empath. I am a little – I'm very empathetic. So when I see all of these stories with, with, with black people being, being confronted by these cops, the overaggressive, the overaggressively questioning cops, the racist cops and whatever, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly, obviously, because I'm not there. I'm not in their shoes. But I get a sense of what they're going through, and admittedly that – kind of makes me a little fearful even though i know like you know intellectually i know i'm in a privileged position but i think it's because of the empath empathy and, and just is and just how i've seen this and how i can kind of empathize with what they might be going through at the time it makes me a little bit fearful too even though like i said i know intellectually i am in a place of pri privilege i have no reason to believe that i have no reason to you know worry about that so you know it, it it does affect, and 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 even with all of that, even even with the empathy and and everything that is caused from it, I know good and well that that doesn't even compare 
to what an actual black person was feeling when confronted by like like cops in riot gear when they're peacefully protesting, you know, and 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 and, and you know, peacefully protesting, not not like some of these people going in there. Whether it's actually some of the protesters that were brought in there or some trolls coming in and causing trouble for everybody, who knows? You know, the peaceful cops, not peace, well, peaceful cops too, but, you know, the peaceful protesters that are worried that the cops are just going to go off on them because that's how they do, or what have you, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so, you know, that's, that's the point I'm trying to get with my own self. I empathize, but I can only empathize so far, I guess right. is what I'm saying. A bunch of privileged white people talking about... Uh, what it's like to live in a black part of town just it yeah. <laughs> it's pretty unrealistic right. for us it to is. say that we have a real understanding yeah. of yeah. what goes on in north county st louis yeah um yeah and i think that's probably that's one of the more important things for us to keep in perspective is that we just don't know and yeah. we never will know what it's like for yeah. you know for african americans in this country and a lot of their anger is perfectly justified a lot yeah. of their uh, you know, these these protests, I, I believe, honestly, whether or not, you know, what Michael Brown did, what Darren Wilson said he did, again, it just comes back to my 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 belief that I just don't think that meant he deserved to die. And just the the immediate response of of cops or just, you know, neighborhood watch, uh, you know, the, just people who are given the power to, you know, to, to make those decisions, the response to immediately just start shooting is wrong and i think that needs to change yeah and and this could get into a much much bigger discussion but that is not a trait um limited to cops this is a gun issue we could turn it into one anyway we could turn it into one because our uh, country yeah. really really loves guns and every day you hear stories about this person brought this gun and and they just shot somebody out of out of anger. And I think even if we're not black, we sort of all live in an environment where you are one person's really bad day away from being shot. Yeah. Uh, and okay. So to wrap up a little bit, um, I, I know there's, there, there's like so much more, but we've, there's like not only an hour, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> but, but to kind of wrap up a bit, um, the things we can say for sure, Michael Brown did not deserve to die. Regardless of what he may or may not have done, he did not deserve to die. The 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 uh, uh, Bob McCulloch, he should have done a better job because again, from what is being presented, and even even with the stuff that you can get from the grand jury testimony, again, this it's the link is below. You can look for it, look at it for yourself. You know, it, it seems like he was softballing Darren Wilson, and that should not have been done. Because he, for whether he feared for his life or not, he still killed Michael Brown. I, I don't think anybody is questioning that at this point. Yeah, and from all you know, from all the evidence that's available to us, or at least you know, from all that we can at least glean, it seems like there was a very severe conflict of interest with McCulloch. So he shouldn't have been the prosecutor. Yeah. So so that is for sure, and. And the fact that this did not even go to trial, especially with all of the all of the, the just basically softballing, he softballed and it didn't go to trial. It's looking a lot like a cover up, you know, in terms of you know McCulloch on on his part. That's what it's looking like. You know, I could be proven right, I could be proven wrong, but. Again, evidence is going to be down below if you're watching this on, on my site, if you're watching it on Nerdvice or on the YouTube or whatever. The links will be down below. Um, all of that good stuff. Um, and again, you know, even with me being you know, empathetic, having empathy and, and having an idea is not the same as actually knowing what the African-American population is, is feeling, you know. So that 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 is that those 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 things right there are the biggest ones I, I hope people take away from this show, right here. Um, my my big takeaway from the entire situation is that zero percent of the things that have gone on I think were handled well. Mm -hmm. uh, I, none of this was handled in in any kind of grace. No, the police didn't handle it. The police have actively 
more likely than not tried to cover stuff up. Um, but the community has acted not so well either, given that most of Ferguson got burnt down. Um, and people from outside the community who have taken advantage of the civil unrest have definitely made things a lot, lot worse. And that's where, again, we get half of Ferguson being burnt down. Um, the media handled this probably the worst mm -hmm. and have really incited a lot more trouble than there should have been. Um, I just think this whole situation is just, it's a miserable, miserable situation um, that people have tried to pick sides for when you really can't. And um, it there's nothing about this was going to ever go right. And there's too many biased parties involved. And, and there's a lot of good discussions that we should be having but we're not having those discussions because we're too busy biting each other's faces off. Yeah. Uh, and, and any last thoughts there, Gonzo? Uh, I, I don't know. There's just, <laughs> I don't really know what to take away from this. I mean, again, going back to the, the point that I was, you know, been hammering in, it's just the, the response, the, the, the fact that we have now such a knee-jerk response to something going wrong is to pull out a gun and just start shooting. I think that's the one thing that really needs to change. That's the one thing that 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 is wrong. And and it, it it is like you said, Cat. It's not just cops. It's that's that's why I say you know I also mentioned neighborhood watch in my uh, in my my previous statement because it's just when you give people that power and you give people the um, you know, the, the notion that you need to be on the lookout for anybody doing anything wrong, then that's, that's going to lead to, you know, some, you know, some bad things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe not, not all the time, obviously, but maybe we just need better screening policies for who we let into the police force or stricter gun control. I don't fucking no yeah. i don't know like, what to take away from any of this all like i know I said, is that michael there's a lot of good things like good discussions that are coming out of it but the those discussions aren't being put forward because we're we're too busy saying this person's right and this person's wrong and this person's a murderer and this person needs to face justice for this and that and there's so many really good good questions that are being raised but they're being drowned out by blame yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So, and, and, and oh, one final thing I did forget to kind of bring up: there were actually uh, some people doxing members of the KKK throughout this whole thing. And yeah. at first, I was like, "Ah ha ha ha, you got doxxed. And then I was like, "Wait a minute! The the you know, despite how horrible these people are, they still have families. They they you know, and we don't want to put the families in danger. Plus, and as somebody pointed out later, they could be doxing the wrong person." So, yeah, doxing the KKK, I wouldn't consider a good idea. And I would be lying if I said I wasn't tempted at first when, when all of your information came out. But I resisted it because, you know, I'm a decent fucking human being. And, 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 I, and I bring this up to say uh, when it comes to doxing, you know, whether, whether or not it's the KKK or little old granny down the street, that's not cool. You know, everybody is better than that. We well, I think the that. only time that anybody deserves to have their information dropped is if they have directly threatened somebody. Yeah. And on like on, online or continues to threaten somebody or is 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 essentially insinuating that this you know that they're going to put this person's life in direct danger. Right. But um. But, but yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I I had meant to bring that up because you know you know people from the KKK were doxxed. So yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but but I, I I'd like to think we're all in pretty much agreement on that, Cat. Um... Yeah, I mean, even if you are a shithead and a terrible racist, you still have a certain right to privacy. Yeah. Um, as you know, granted somewhere in the Constitution, maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically, I really feel like in this country we need to be a little more empathetic, and if. If you wouldn't want your personal information thrown all over the internet so people can harass you and potentially endanger your life, maybe you shouldn't do that to other people. Yeah. And especially if it's, you know, say anonymous who all wear masks and remain IDK anonymous. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you know, so that their personal lives aren't put in danger, but they're willing to do that to other people. We need a little more empathy. Yeah, just a little bit, you know. I mean, I mean, hey, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a good thing that I have the empathy that I do, because it keeps me from being a complete shithead, asshole, maybe, but not a shithead. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can be an asshole. <laughs> Okay, so we, we went on a little longer than anticipated, but you know what? That's okay. We got some good discussions out of the way. Uh, to reiterate again, um, like you said, Kat, you know, the situation being handled like 0% good. I th Well, I think you said, you know, you know, Mike Brown did not deserve to be shot. I don't care what anybody says. Um, I should have went to trial for the conflicting evidence alone just so we can figure out what the truth is. And don't dox fuckers, all right? Just don't do it. Not it's not cool, you know, and it could get you in a lot of trouble if you get Just caught. Do unto others as you would have done unto you, and then maybe the world would actually be a better place. Yeah, you know that that is one of those biblical things that I I would encourage people to follow. As yeah. and I am saying this as a non-Christian, by the way. Yeah, you know, exactly. Do unto others. The Bible is not completely you know full of shit. They do put they do have some good things in there. It's just not a good basis for a religion, I don't think, you know. But that's a whole other discussion. That's another. That is podcast. another discussion. <laughs> yes. So, uh, anyways. Now for part two of our Ferguson discussion, <laughs> let's bash Christianity for an hour. <laughs> yes. Oh. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to get out of here. Uh, Gonzo, if we wanted to find you on social media, where could we find you? You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, and Instagram at Gonzo Link. Um, I am part of the Gotham High audio drama. You can hear me as Bruce Wayne. I'm also a part of Team Brotherhood's abridged series, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Abridged. I play the narrator. And I also have my own podcast that I host with Zenith Will Rule. It's called Focus on the Frames, and it's a podcast about movies. And you can find that on focusontheframespodcast.tumblr.com and on Zenith's channel, Zenith Will Review. Sweet, and don't forget next constructive deconstruction. He will, he, he's, he's on there too. <laughs> yes, and constructive deconstruction. I'm sorry, I'm so yeah. used to being. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you're used to being on the other one and not having to do it. I know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's totally understandable. Uh, and Cat, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on the social medias at facebookcom slash labyrinth or no, it's Nerdist Cat, and then Twitter at labyrinth cat, and then you can find me on my other shows, What the Fuck, over on 1201beyond.com, and on my my primary show, which is a lot less depressing than these other shows, um, Nerd to the Third Power, over on That Guy with the Glasses under the podcast tab. Yes. And as for me, you can find my, my, yeah, me on the social medias. I'm, I'm trying to go Southern. I don't want to go Southern, damn it. I thought you were about to porky pig it. Like, ib 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 Well, you can find me, 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 me on the social medias uh, at gomer 2 double X. That's Twitter, Tumblr. Um, plug it in different places. You might find me. Who knows? Um, and I do have a Patreon, but that is right there in in the uh, post you know you know in the uh, post thing there so i don't have to do that anymore <laughs> the description is yeah that what you meant to say well no the not bumper the that i oh. made for you because i'm such a kind and gentle soul yes and, and, and i owe you like several dinners i, I just need to get to st louis to do it <laughs> <laughs> oh but yes all that is in the uh, after show bumper there um and and again, if you if you're interested in Patreon and or you're a patron of mine or whatever, uh, I will be making some changes, bringing back the advertising thing. That will that will be discussed uh, in a separate vlog later on in the week. So, anyways, thank you guys for listening, and until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the Cat and Gonzo Link signing off. See ya. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.